sod houses, boom-time mansions, wartime homes, and suburban bungalows are all represented in this historical survey of housing in Saskatoon. Drawing from the extensive collection of historical photographs in the local history room at Saskatoon Public Library, this exhibition examines various styles of domestic architecture through the decades. The grand homes of the rich and famous, as well as the modest bungalows of the ordinary family, provide a portrait of how people lived in Saskatoon in the past. An unidentified family poses in front of their home. Built of a combination of lumber, logs, and sod, the first shelter of early settlers was often a sod house or soddy. John Kahn, who came to Saskatoon in 1883, erected its first building, a sod house on the river bank east of the Broadway Bridge. Built in 1885 for Silas Lake, the Temperance Colony's first school classes were held in the house, with the children sitting on homemade benches. Grace Fletcher bought the house located at 438 Main Street in 1891 and later operated it as a boarding house for women. The women in the photograph have been identified as Allie Thompson, Grace Fletcher, Jenny Howell, and Nina Fletcher McLean. Likely constructed in 1902, the house at 502 11th Street was the home of George Herbert Clare, Saskatoon realtor and partner in the Irvine and Clare General Store at Broadway and Main. The house was originally numbered 511th Street East. The Clares would only live in the house for 10 years before moving into a larger home next door. When it was built between 1901 and 1903, the home of James Klingskill on Spadina Crescent at 19th Street was one of the city's finest. Klingskill later reminisced, In the absence of a local architect, I procured a book of architect sketches, selecting the style of house we fancied. I proceeded to draw my own plans, led a contract for the labour, I supplying all the material, and had a commodious, comfortable home erected at a cost of $6,000. This interior view of James Klingskill's home at 157 Spadina Crescent shows the living room and part of the dining room in 1911. The main floor also had a breakfast room, a bedroom, and the kitchen. Upstairs were five bedrooms and a bathroom. The room with the bay window on the second floor was Klingskill's study. From it he had a fine view of the river. The brick house at 436 Spadina Crescent East near 20th Street was home to businessman W. W. Ashley and his family from 1909 to 1911. President of the Saskatoon Horticultural Society and an active member of the Saskatoon Parks Board, Ashley was instrumental in the City Beautiful campaign. For almost 20 years, the house would be home to jo the John Fillion family. It would be demolished to make way for the construction of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. An unidentified family in formal dress surveys the luxuriant growth in their backyard garden. Every inch of ground has been planted with beans climbing on the outbuildings and sunflowers taller than the standing men. The Bowerman home at 1328 Avenue K South was built in 1907 as a summer residence for Alan Bowerman, at one time Saskatoon's wealthiest citizen. Designed by architect Walter Lachance, the house has elements of the western stick style. Bowerman would live in the house until 1923. When the sanatorium opened in 1925, 
The house became home to Superintendent Dr. H. C. Bowton. He and his family would live in the house until 1959. Udo Schrader and daughter Leonora sit on the front steps of their home at 321 6th Avenue North in this 1916 photograph. Constructed in 1908 for Mrs. Leonora Mallory in a style common to the American Midwest, the house originally cost $20,000. Members of the Mallory and Schrader family would live in the house for over seven decades. Rachel and William Stevenson sit on the front porch of their home at 311 11th Street East. Built in 1910 for George Thompson, editor of the Capitol, the house was renumbered to 313 in 1913. The Stevenson family would live in the house from 1912 until 1937. The Stevensons had come to Saskatoon in 1886, where William worked as a stonemason and Rachel ran the Loxley Hall boarding house. Rachel and William Stevenson sit on the front porch of their home at 311 11th Street East. Built in 1910 for George Thompson, editor of the Capitol, the house is renumbered to th <laughs> the Archie P. McNabb House, long a landmark in Saskatoon stood on a commanding location at 706 Melrose Avenue and 11th Street. McNabb was for many years a member of the provincial legislature and later Saskatchewan's lieutenant governor. Built in 1909, the house was sublet into seven suites in the early 30s. It was later operated by the Salvation Army as the Bethany Hospital for Unwed Mothers. The building was raised in 1969 to make way for apartments. In a city of beautiful homes, the house at 307 Saskatchewan Crescent West dominates. Construction on William Hopkins' mansion began in 1910 when he was mayor of Saskatoon. Two years later, the brick castle with its huge pillars and sweeping balconies was finished at a cost of $50,000. Long the center of Saskatoon social life, the house had fallen hard times in 1938 when it was sold and converted into an apartment block. Restoration of the house began in 1982. Constructed by architect Frank P. Martin for his own use in 1926, the house at 716-718 Saskatchewan Crescent East was built as a semi-detached dwelling to provide income in difficult times. Concrete pile forms from the construction of the University Bridge were used to provide a sound foundation on land that was marshy. Frank J. Martin, the son of Frank P. Martin, would later gain title to the house. Catherine Wynn sits on the steps of the Wynn family home at 404 Avenue L North near Westmount School. Typical of low-income housing of the period, the wood shingle-sided house was constructed by her father, John Wynn, in 1927. John Wynn had come to Saskatoon in 1908, working as a laborer. He would work for the Canadian National Railway until retirement in 1952. With its stone-trimmed fan-arched windows, ornate balcony and chimney, Leon Proseski's Elliott Street home was assessed in 1931 as being far beyond ordinary. Proseski, the manager of Saskatoon Contracting, built his house at 1138 Elliott Street in 1931. Former mayor and senator Sidney Buckwold would live in the house from 1946 to 1969. In 1932, Ethel Howey's new house at 1345 Elliott Street 
was distinguished from its neighbors by the undulating curves of its simulated thatched roof. The house's longest-term residence was Dr. Joseph J. Schachter, a pioneer dentist and orthodontist who practiced from 1937 until retiring in 1972. Mr. and Mrs. John Clark pose in front of their charming bungalow and well-maintained yard at 740 Avenue I South. Constructed in 1929-30, to 30, the Clarks would live in the home until 1966. It would then become the home of William and Mary Panasiak. The back lawn of Saskatoon industrialist Fred Mendel's home at 303 Saskatchewan Crescent Rust provided the setting for this garden party for wives attending the convention of the Saskatoon branch of the Canadian Veterinary Medical Association. Gracious and charming hosts, the Mendels played host to many large functions and parties. In the 1940s, in response to a nationwide housing crisis, some 800 wartime houses were contracted for between Saskatoon and federal housing agencies. Originally meant for war veterans or their widows, these assembly line wartime houses were built to a narrow range of designs. Their traces remain in various residential areas. This home was at 1719 Victoria Avenue. Luella Thiessen and her daughter Melody enjoy the garden behind their wartime house at 1414 10th Avenue North. Other wartime houses are visible across the alley. Some 40 houses were constructed in the North Park area under the 1947 Wartime Housing Program. The Thiessen family moved into their home in 1957. The house at 514 Avenue G South was home to John Keedwell when it was built in 1912. Over the years, it provided a home to tailors, firemen, carpenters, and bankers. In 1954, when the photograph was taken and before renovations had begun, it was the home of Russell and Rose Lougheed. Is that Rose in the window? Dr. John S. Brown picks beans in his garden at 329 Fifth Avenue North. Dr. Brown began his career in Sutherland in 1910, serving as medical health officer, before deciding to specialize in pediatrics. He would give up his practice in 1949 and move to California. Soft or rounded corners, a flat roof and a smooth wall finish without surface ornamentation characterize the art modern style of the house at 1322 Avenue K South. Part of a group of houses belonging to the Saskatoon Sanatorium, these flat tops house San employees. The houses were heated by steam from the sanatorium's main boiler and were demolished when they became too expensive to heat. The interior of the 1955 Saskatoon Exhibition Dream Home was furnished by various Saskatoon suppliers. During the 1950s and 1960s, the Saskatoon Exhibition sold tickets on a display house constructed on the exhibition grounds. After it had been awarded to the lucky winner on the Saturday night of Exhibition Week, the house would be moved to a lot in one of the newer residential areas. The ranch-style home at 409 Willow Street is typical of the modern homes constructed in the 1950s. In 1956, it was owned by William Tell. Tell was manager of Cindercrete Products, and his home reflects the use of Cindercrete materials.
While a mannequin piece tinkles in the Temple d'Amour, gnomes and cherubs representing the four seasons frolic in the distinctive garden in the backyard of Robert Heinitz's home at 2233 Wiggins Avenue. Heinitz's love of theatre can be seen in the many theatrical touches in his backyard. Built in 1962 by Keith Construction, the two-story house with built-in garage at 2018 Preston Avenue was down the block from the Keith sales office. The original owner, John Bean, only lived in the house for two years before moving on. Hugh McElligot would be the house's longest resident. We hope you enjoyed this adaptation of Saskatoon House and Garden. The original gallery show was held from February 14th to March 17th, 2006, and was launched in conjunction with the City of Saskatoon's Heritage Awards. Discover more about the city's architectural heritage by visiting the local history room at the Francis Morrison Central Library.